It's time for Living with Victory, a program of hope and encouragement brought to you by Friends of Compassion and listeners like you. Now here's your host, President of Compassion for Kids, Tony Giorgio, with today's message of perseverance. Welcome to Living with Victory. I'm your host, Tony Giorgio, and I do have my co-host, Lorraine, here with me today. Proving life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass or the coals or the gravelly voices. It's about learning to dance in the rain. Lord knows it's called perseverance. And just a reminder, you can email us your comments if you like at livingwithvictory at gmail.com. And I want to remind you uh, there's something real interesting around. It's called the Journey Christian Newspaper. And it's a free monthly print and online publication offering Christian perspective news, Christian events, and encouraging articles. Visit their website at www.journeychristiannews.com. The Christian newspaper encourages Christians on their walk with Christ. Now for the word of the day and my wonderful, wonderful co-host here, Laureen, who will read it. And we'll get on with our subject for today. Hi. Hi, everyone. It's so good to be here. We're going to talk today about something that is very close to my heart and I love to do. I love to praise God. Habakkuk is a very small book in the Bible. There are only three chapters. But there's a verse there that is, to me, very powerful, and I wanted to share it with you. Habakkuk 3.19. The Lord God is my strength my personal bravery, and my invincible army. He makes my feet like hinds feet and will make me to walk, not stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual progress upon my high places of trouble, suffering, or responsibility. The prophet was God's prophet and lived in Judah. And the prophet observed that the leaders in Judah were oppressing the poor. And so he raises the question as to why God allows these wicked people to prosper. I believe we can all relate to this statement. We feel we're struggling, we're trying to do things the right way, and people out there may be doing everything against God's way and prospering. Habakkuk was upset about this, and he was questioning God. Why do you allow this to happen? Then God assures him that the Chaldeans, which is another nation that is very wicked and evil, will come to punish Judah, he becomes more concerned. How can justice prevail when the wicked Chaldeans, who are actually worse than the wicked Jews, are allowed by God to bring judgment upon God's chosen people? God's reply is that the just shall live by faith in God and have the confidence that God is doing what is right. Habakkuk is then assured that the Chaldeans will in due time be judged and that ultimately righteousness and justice will prevail for the people of God. In a psalm of praise, which is the third chapter, Habakkuk resolves his problems. And that's where the praise comes in because he knew what was coming. It was going to be a very difficult time, but he found his peace and joy in God even though the storm was going to rage in his praise to God. There's there's no no doubt about that how many times. And and I think of a a story way, way back when we had moved to Orlando, if if you remember, uh, from Fort Lauderdale, and we had a house down there that we, we didn't sell so we thought we'd rent and we we gave it to a trusting uh, real estate uh, agent and asked them to rent it which they did supposedly and we we're in Orlando feeling quite good about everything uh, until the checks started coming in for the rent and the checks were bouncing and hence it never got fine it it, it just seemed to get worse to the point where now we're, we're not paying the mortgage on that house. Sound familiar? We're, we're about to lose this, and we're God knows how many miles away now. Well, we're 
in Orlando. The house was in Fort Lauderdale, which was about three hours away. So we really couldn't go running back and forth. Otherwise, we'd have to be out of work. It got so bad that, yeah, we, we ended up getting foreclosed on the house. But one thing you're forgetting is that the real estate agent who qualified the person to live in the house before we left didn't tell us that he was running from the police in Indiana. Uh, yes, and, and, and the, the other thing was, yeah, that it was a friend of the real estate agent. This guy was a, a friend. He was wanted by the police. She qualified him. And this guy was on the run. He stole his boss's car, and the woman who he had with him from, <laughs> which he's from Indiana, he said it was his wife. It wasn't was so his wife. crazy. You got to understand, this was wild. I have, I have a wanted criminal in my house with a real estate agent saying, oh, yeah, it's perfectly okay. But the best part of it was he moved out and rented the house to someone else. Oh, yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. He took, he's not paying me. His checks are bouncing. Real estate agents saying everything's okay. He goes off. He gets a guy. I don't know where. $2,000 he charges this guy, gives him the lease, and this guy moves in. Well, there is no way. You know, this is a no-win situation. He's not paying any more money because he paid that guy $2,000 who skipped down. He left. Police couldn't find him. It, it was unbelievable. You, now, we're talking about, see, evil, you know, gets the good. And it, <laughs> Most definitely. We were surrounded by it. But you know what? There's where the frustration comes in. And we were in Orlando saying, God, just like Habakkuk. What? Why? No, I don't get this, but it's okay to talk to God because he is a personal God and he knows our frustration. He was down here and he died for us, so he knows what we all go through. And he does not mind one bit to have a dialogue with us. I'm going to read you something out of the Application Study Bible, King James Version, which explains the verse that Lorraine just read in Habakkuk. And it says that God will give his followers sure-footed confidence through difficult times. Wow, did we need that. And they will run like deer across rough and dangerous terrain. At the proper time, God, and I term this perseverance, at the proper time, God will bring about his justice and completely rid the world of evil. In the meantime, God's people need to live in the strength of his spirit, confident in his ultimate victory over evil. And that was from the Life Application King James Version Study Bible. Wow, well, we smacked around. I mean, it, it was crazy. It, it didn't make any sense. I had to call the police. I'm trying to track this guy. You know, he, he's with the, the, the barmaid from the bar. It's not his <laughs> wife. Good Lord. You know, it was just wild. They wrecked the house. I mean, they had taken that place apart. I got a guy who's living in there who's not paying me anything. So, hi, they, you know. Well, <laughs> we were praying so hard how to resolve this because in good faith, we left leaving everything in place because we didn't want to cheat the mortgage company. We wanted to pay for the house. And we thought we had it all covered. But, you know, sometimes things just happen that way. And, you know, and we're asking God, what do we do now? How do we get out of this and make this right? And Tony was on the phone with the mortgage company, I don't know how many times. See, as Christians, sometimes we put our faith and trust in people in what we are being told we, we, we put everything in place we thought was okay, but again, we trusted in man, and that, that doesn't always work out. you you got to trust in the Lord Jesus leading you. When they were finally going to foreclose on the house, a lawyer told us to go down to Fort Lauderdale to explain what had happened so that we would not have to owe anything after the foreclosure. I worked at nights at Disney, and I hadn't had a problem with my car. It was running fine. The minute I got out of work, got into my car, it wouldn't start. We had to leave early the next morning, 
get down to Fort Lauderdale, be in the courthouse to be before the judge and explain ourselves and all of that. That car, it would stall. It would not start up. If you stopped it, you turned the engine off, you were finished. We took this trip with this car all the way to Fort Lauderdale doing this. All right? And, and you talk about having confidence. But also praying along the way. And we did our warfare because we were praising God because we didn't understand it, but we certainly knew it wasn't God doing this to us. Evil is all around. And for some reason, Satan didn't want us down there, but we had to get there. So we persevered. So we, we just made our way inch by inch. And you talk about frustrating, but we, we were trusting. And that's why, you know, we try to tell you in our lifetime, we've had some real whoppers here as they say even up to the point of pulling it to the parking lot the car died we couldn't put it in a parking space no I, well <laughs> i tell you what we the, the weirdest the weirdest thing of all is there we are we're in, we finally make it to the courthouse with like a minute to spare and we are really we're we're tired we're we're out of breath we're rushing <laughs> And I now, jumped out of the car and ran and, and told him, we're a, here, we're here. And, I, and I'm trying to park the car. Well, I'm trying to park the car. It stalls, okay, right right, just outside the spot. I'm trying to pull in. It won't go anymore. It won't go. I had to literally push it into the spot to get it out of the way. That was it. It wouldn't start. And I said, oh, the heck with it. I got to get to court because we're late. And we went into that courtroom and did what we had to do, you know. And so it, it turned out that because we were there, because we looked like somebody dragged us. <laughs> we could have walked. <laughs> through the mud. Or, yeah, we walked from Orlando to Fort Lauderdale. We did not get a judgment against us. Yes, the house was foreclosed, but we didn't know a thing. And that was the thing. We told our story, and they thanked us for being there. Because normally you don't show up at these things. But we felt that we needed to be there. We didn't do anything wrong. We tried not to cheat the bank. But I'll tell you what. Remember this. Evildoers don't get away with anything. It may appear so for a time. But God is ultimately in control. We get back out. We get in the car. It starts up with no problem. And I tell you what, folks. We went all the way back to Orlando never having a problem. We stopped for gas, we shut the car off, we went for lunch. And it, that car ran perfectly. But the devil was trying to stop us from getting there. But we praised God all the way there. And coming back, boy, did we praise God because it was free sailing and God did give us the victory. God is the Savior of your entire situation he's there for you and now as we're we're leading into the end so to speak if you want to contact us it's livingwithvictory.org if you'd like to send us an email we'd love to hear from you even if you don't like the show and that's livingwithvictory at gmail.com if, if you want, you can also send a donation because we are supported solely by our listeners and our friends. We are grassroots, so you can send a donation tax deductible to Living With Victory, Post Office Box 1982, in beautiful Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. And so, remember, till next week, this is Tony and Laureen Giorgio. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Living with Victory with your host, motivational and inspirational speaker, Tony Giorgio. Support for Living with Victory comes from friends of compassion and listeners like you. Your tax-deductible donations can be sent to Compassion for Kids, P.O. Box 1982, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, 28751. Tony is also available to speak to your group or organization. You can call him at 828-926-4600. Join us again next week at this time for another uplifting story of Dancing in the Rain. Jesus is with me when the storm clouds gather. He's standing by my side.